good morning. This is the time and place for the planning hearing officer hearing for August 16th, 2017. My name is Vilia Zamaitaitis and I will be conducting the hearing as hearing officer. Okay, the microphone is on, okay. Let me start that over again with the microphone that is. Good morning. This is the time and place for the planning hearing officer hearing for August 16th, 2017. My name is Vilia Zemaitaitis and I will be the, conducting the hearing as hearing officer. We have two cases on today's agenda and relevant exhibits are posted on the panels directly behind me. Uh, the two cases, one involves a conditional use permit and the other involves a standards variance. And again, if the, if the variance and the conditional use permit uh, are able to make all required for findings based on our Glendale Municipal Code, it can then be granted or approved with conditions. If those findings cannot be made, then unfortunately I am in a position where I am forced to deny the project. Public notice, uh, notification of the hearing was accomplished by the use of public notices that were mailed to all property owners and occupants located within 500 feet of the subject properly, physically posted on the site, and placed in the local newspaper. The hearing will proceed as follows. I'll read a brief description of the application request. I will then read any comments received from other city departments. The case planner will make a brief overview presentation of the case, and the applicant will then be asked to come forward, stating both name and address, and then will be asked to speak on the item for a period of 15 minutes. Others in support or in opposition to the project are then also allowed to come forward and speak um, with a three minute time limit. And lastly, the applicant will be given a rebuttal period of two minutes, and at that point, the hearing will be closed and the case taken under submission. After the hearing, the decision will be prepared in writing and will be in the form of a letter sent to the applicant and to all persons who responded to the public notice either by speaking today or by submitting a written correspondence. The date of the decision will be the date appearing on the letter. And under the appeals provision of our Glendale Municipal Code, appeals may be filed within 15 calendar days of the decision date and that appeal will then be presented to the Planning Commission in a de novo hearing. If you, again, if you wish to speak, please write your name and address on one of the speaker cards provided by the front door and submit it to staff. I would also like to inform everyone that the official proceedings of the Planning Hearing Officers hearing are being videotaped and made part of the public record. Which brings us to today's agenda. The first case on the agenda is a conditional use permit case number PCUP 1708314 for a massage establishment located at 1428 East Colorado Street, Unit B. The applicant is Yong Yung Lee, and the project description. Uh, again, it's, it's an application for a conditional use permit to continue the operation of a massage establishment in the C3 Commercial Services Zone located at 1428 East Colorado Street, Unit B, described as portions of lots 11 through 15, track number 8048, and portions of lot 1, track number 5718 in the city of Glendale. The project is exempt from CEQA review as a Class 1 existing facility. In terms of comments regarding the case from other city departments, I believe that there were no comments um, from Neighborhood Services after a field check. Standard conditions uh, from the city attorney with regards to the massage establishment in order to comply with the Glendale Municipal Code for uh, massage establishments based on Chapter 5.64. Um, the police department had one comment, um, well, that there were no calls for service for this particular business in the last year, though 
based on a uh, certified massage therapist certification through the state, that is, the website check of the applicant's name, that there was not a current valid certificate. Uh, this is for the massage establishment. So I will be asking later on if the applicant has renewed their massage certificate through the state. Other than that, there were just standard conditions from the police department um, and no other comments of significance. So I'd like to turn the, the matter over to Ms. Eileen Babakanian for a brief presentation. Thank you, Ms. Amatitis. Um, the applicant, Mr. Lee, is requesting approval of a conditional use permit to allow the continued operation of a massage establishment located at 1428 East Colorado Street, Unit B, in the C3 Commercial Service Zone. Massage service is an allowed use in C3 Zone subject to approval of a conditional use permit. The current applicant seasonal message is operating at this location since 2013. There are no other cases or active building permits being processed with this case and staff is recommending approval with condition for this case. Um, the project site is a 14,000 14, square foot lot located at the southeast corner of Colorado Street and Langley Street. The um, 1,000 square foot massage establishment is located in a one-story 7,048 square foot multi-tenant commercial building. The building is occupied by various uses including a full service restaurant, fast food restaurants, and a dentist office. There are three parking spaces available on the site with access from Colorado Street. The properties surrounding the subject sites are developed with residential and commercial uses. Residential properties are located across an alley to the south side of the subject property and commercial uses about the subject side to the east, to the east side. Um, as you mentioned, the city department, other department didn't have any concern regarding the CUP. Staff didn't receive any letter or comments from public regarding this CUP approval. And within the last calendar year, there were no calls for police service at this location. Staff believes that all of the findings for the conditional use permit can be made in a positive manner, and therefore staff recommends approval um, of this CUP. And also staff suggests that a uh, planning hearing officer consider detachment draft findings and conditions of approval. Um, I briefly going, I'm briefly going over the findings that the staff made in the staff report. The proposed use would be consistent with the variance element and objectives of the general plan for the area. The use and associate structure in facilities will not be detrimental to the public health or safety, the general welfare or the environment. As I mentioned, the immediate vicinity of the subject site is developed with single family and multifamily residential uses on the south across an alley and commercial uses, including personal services and vehicle repair garage are located on the east side of the site. Commercial developments surround the subject site across Colorado Street to the north and across the, the Langley Street to the west. The subject massage establishment has been in operation at this location since October 10, 2013. No report have been received of any impacts from the existing massage establishment. No change are proposed to the existing on-site building or site plan, including the parking lot. The commercial building is oriented towards Colorado Street, and no windows face the residential neighbors to the south. There are two schools and a public park in close proximity to the massage establishment. However, no evidence has been presented that would indicate the subject massage establishment will have any negative impact to those uh, public locations. And um, the use and facilities will not adversely affect or conflict with adjacent uses or impact the normal development of surrounding properties. No changes are proposed to the existing on-site building as part of the CUP application. Um, additional condition and a short term uh, for the expiration will help ensure that no legal activities are conducted at this site. 
and the last finding, adequate pub public and private facilities such as utilities, landscaping, and traffic circulation measures are provided for the site and the use. The use has been in operation at this location since 2013. A total of 13 parking spaces are provided in the surface parking light, lot, and um, the applicant application does not include any added floor area to the existing building or subject tenant space, or also, which means um, there's no need for the parking requirement as part of this application. The existing utilities, landscaping, parking spaces, and traffic circulation measures are adequate as they are already in place. And that was my presentation. I'm available for your question. Thank you very, thank mm -hmm. you very much. I believe I'm going to have a question regarding the operation of the massage establishment to the applicant, actually, uh -huh. simply because based on the staff report, uh, there was a zoning use certificate that was issued in 2013. Mm -hmm. So the massage establishment has been in operation since 2013. So I would like to confirm with the applicant whether or not he has been the person operating the massage establishment since 2013 or if he's a new owner. Okay, so if you don't mind, uh, please come up to the podium, state your name and address for the record, and I believe, thank you. So the applicant is Mr. Lee, and I have a speaker card by uh, Mr. Um, Estebanati, right. who's going to be speaking on behalf of Mr. Yes. Lee, is that correct? Yes. Okay, thank you. So please. Uh, um, my state, your, state your name. A.B. Estabanati. Okay. Thank you. I'm glad to help him out information for the CUP today. Today. Okay. And please, if you don't mind going through the, the required findings okay. and just a brief description of the operation. That was it from A, B, C, D, please. Yes, they are the findings. Do you want me to read those for you? Well, do you do you have the question? do you have the required findings that you submitted as part of the application? Yes. Okay. Perhaps you can go over the required findings that you submitted for the application then. Okay. We, we already seen our documents to you guys before all the driving everything. Okay. But yes, you need to to be answered. To be answered. Okay. So. Um, since staff did such a stellar job going through the required findings, okay, we won't torture you by having to go through those that you submitted for the application as well. Um, but if you could, it you. just enlighten us. So, Mr. Lee has been the operator of the business since 2013? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Have there been any changes since the 2013 no, establishment? One owner. It was him. One owner. Okay. Right. Um, also, based on the police comments, the massage technician's license from the state expired in January in 2017. It's all updated right now. And that has been renewed? Yes, ma'am. And it's been submitted? Yes. So do the massage technicians in the establishment all have their individual licenses? That's certificate. Okay, yes. so we'll need to have those provided to okay. staff as well. Okay. Um, in doing my, in visiting the site, I noticed that there are a number of sign violations, yeah. uh, the windows are covered up, the doors are covered up, so uh, as part of the recommended conditions, right. that all that signage would have to comply with today's remove sign regulations. Today. So you'll need to remove it, everything up to a maximum of 25% of the windows. No problem. Okay. Yeah. So all signage would need to comply with the required uh, sign codes, and then also the establishment itself would also have to meet the standards that are in Chapter 5 with regards to massage establishments. Okay. So with the licensing, the visibility of the front counter, the visibility throughout the massage business yes. and whatnot. So has the applicant read through those yes, conditions yes. and is agreeing to adhere to all those yes. standards? Okay. 
Okay. Um, is there anything that else that you would like to add on behalf of your CEP application? Not really. He has, he has no major issue on that premises. He's in good, good shape. Okay. I mean, and, you've, and you've read through the recommended conditions of approval that were in the staff report? Yes. Okay. And you, you agree to all of those yes. conditions? Okay. With that said, I have no other questions for the applicant or staff, so I will be taking that matter under consideration. Thank you for coming. Thank you. I appreciate today. it. Thank you. Have a good day. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, I'll proceed to the next item on today's agenda, which is a variance for a project for a single family home located at 3624 Encinal Avenue. This would be variance case number PVAR 1704220. The applicant is Barbara Pademi. Project description um, is to maintain a one car, a 10 foot wide, 10 inch by 20 foot deep. And this would be the one car garage in conjunction with a 496 square foot addition to an existing single family, single story residence on a 5,450 square foot lot located in the R1 low density residential zone, floor area district two, and this would be without providing the required two car garage. Okay. Uh, in terms of comments from other various departments, Comments were received from the maintenance services urban forester regarding the tree oak the three oak trees located at the rear of the project site. Uh, there are concerns regarding the location of the proposed deck in relation to that larger tree on the property. And there are mitigation measures. So that will need to be addressed. Uh, standard building and safety conditions. No concerns from neighborhood services. And that includes all of the various comments from the other interdepartmental divisions. Um, I'd like to turn the hearing over to Mr. Danny Manasarian for a staff presentation regarding the case. Good morning, Ms. Zamatidis. Uh, like you said, the applicant's request is to maintain a one-car garage in conjunction with the 496-square-foot addition to an existing single-story, single-family residence uh, without providing the required two-car garage. Uh, this project is exempt from CEQA review as a Class One existing facilities. Um, the lot has frontage on Encinal Avenue and slopes downwards as the lot goes from north to south. Uh, the existing 1,303 square foot house and attached one car garage were built in 1948. The existing one car garage is located two feet lower than the rest of the house, uh, requiring steps to access the living room. The easterly interior setback is three feet five inches, while the westerly interior setback is three feet eight inches. The applicant is proposing to add the 496 square feet, um, which consists of a new master bedroom, bathroom, walk-in closet, and laundry room, and a 73 square foot deck at the rear of the existing one-story home to provide more living space. The proposed addition triggers the existing one-car garage to be brought up to code, which is a 20 by 20 interior clear garage. Enlarging the existing one-car garage, attached garage, to meet current code would create a practical difficulty and significant hardship by requiring the expansion of the garage into the existing house and the demolition of a large portion of the living room. A code-compliant 20 by 20 garage cannot be located anywhere else on the lot without demolishing a large portion of the house. Since the existing easterly interior setback is already only three foot five inches, and the westerly interior setback is three feet eight inches, where four feet would be required for new construction. The current configuration does not have enough room for a driveway 
to a detached garage at the rear, and the required interior setbacks prohibit expansion of the garage into the side setback, thereby making it difficult to build a new two-car garage elsewhere. The front setback is 30 feet in length, which will not allow for a new detached garage. Therefore, the construction of a new code-compliant garage would be considered a significant hardship. There are exceptional circumstances applicable to this property that does not appear, apply to other properties in the same neighborhood. This lot is the only property on the block of, uh, of smaller lots which was developed with a one-car garage at the front. Unlike the other lot configurations in the area, this existing site plan with the attached garage at the front creates exceptional circumstances that make it difficult to construct a code-compliant two-car garage without major changes to the existing house. With the existing one-car one garage and longer driveway in front, two cars could essentially be parked on the lot, one covered, one uncovered. This would essentially meet the intent of providing off-street parking for two cars. The requested variance will allow the existing single-family home to expand while keeping the house functional. Like you said, conditions from the Urban Forestry Department are included in the draft con conditions of, of approval. No other city departments had major concerns regarding this application. Staff believes that the project meets the four required findings for the standards variance and therefore recommends approval of the requ requested variance application with recommended conditions. Uh, this concludes my presentation. This presentation, and I'm available for any questions. Thank you, Mr. Mm -hmm. Sorry, not at this time. Uh, I would like to invite. Uh, does not okay. So the applicant is not present. Is that correct? Um, and is the applicant then being represented by? I'm um, okay. And the property owner is actually present as well. So um, why don't I invite the person who is going to, who is representing the applicant to come up and speak and perhaps you'd like to identify the, the submitted findings, actually the findings that were submitted as part of your variance application, if you'd like. And state your name and address for the record. So there's, I believe, the designer and the contractor. Um, so. Is that the, I just the, get, findings the findings are right here oh. that were submitted as part of. Good morning. My name is Eyal Abraham. Um, I'm the designer on the job. Okay. Um, we are pretty much asking uh, to build an addition for a master bedroom to existing property uh, with the back uh, facing uh, with the deck facing the back of the property. Um, geographically, uh, the property doesn't allow us, uh, geographically and the way that the property is being uh, set and the house is being built on top, um, doesn't allow us to pretty much uh, enlarge uh, the existing garage and create a two-car garage 20 by 20. Um, um, do I need to read? The, the findings well, you here? Need, you or, need to uh, address the required findings that need to be made in order to approve the variance because if we can't make the required findings, we can't approve the variance. All right. So, A, no space for additional garage parking. Um, the garage right now is located as a lower level onto the house, pretty much. It's attached uh, and it will require. Uh, if we will need to uh, enlarge the garage, it will probably need to um, buy the, a serious uh, a chunk of the house uh, to enlarge the garage, and that will take us to a completely different scenario of construction that probably this job is not going to happen. Um, I cannot read number, I cannot read B. Uh, the existing home is already small. Uh, and is not space to build due to the sign the setback. Um, the lot itself is pretty narrow. Uh, the house and the garage is marked as far as sideways 
Uh, there is not much space on the side yard to pretty much, if we will not in to bite into the house, we cannot enlarge to the side. So there is no way that we could pretty much build to the side. Um, Uh, C will be, uh, we are still uh, maintaining the look of the home and the new addition will be the, um, it's very hard for me to read this, I'm sorry, I wasn't the one no, to I, read I this. No, I understand, you weren't the applicant that um, heard the... Um, we are pretty much building to the back. Uh, we are not in to change the look of the house or creating uh, a different building from what's there already. Uh, the change uh, and the additional to the house itself uh, will not affect the look or the uh, the frontage of the house. Um, D. Uh, um, we are not changing. Uh, we are not change. We are not changing the character of the home and it's consistent with the neighborhood. So pretty much there, again, there is no any uh, work to the front of the house proposed. Um, all the work is going to be done, is going to be done to the back of the, of the property. Um, nothing will show, we are not in to do any major change to the look facade of the building. Mm -hmm. um, and hopefully we can make it happen due to the uh, existing conditions. Okay. Thank you. Um, I have a, f a few questions yes. with regards to certain issues at the rear that were mentioned uh, in regards to actually the oak trees. Okay. And then there's also a lower basement portion, which so I'm not sure whether you would like to answer this or whether I should whether I should point these questions to the contractor or the owner. But why don't I go ahead and and ask, just the ask them, and then <laughs> we can we can you can. Decide amongst yourselves who is best able to answer these questions. Okay. Um, okay. Hi. My name is Gil Palatin. I'm nope. the contractor. Oh, you're good. Great. All right. So regarding the oak tree, first of all, uh, the issue over there, the drip line over there is uh, we're building the room in the other side. So we're already using a, a certificate uh, arbitrage for every, every job that we do. When there is an oak tree and they come in, they're putting a fence or the drip line or five foot away from the drip line or 10%, whatever it's required. They're putting a, a chain link fence around it that not by any mistake is going to come any debris or any construction material not coming over there. I live in Agora Hills and the oak tree is very important for me. So every job that I have with oak tree, I, I use a thrifty tree services. And they know they're coming, they're putting the, the fence around. They don't even by mistake, somebody's going to put the, the breeze or material next to the drip line. Regarding the shade in the, uh, in the back, in the, in the back it's like, it's not a shade, it's maybe like two or three two by fours from 1960s standing over there with a, with a top on it, and there is like material. We can take it down if it's, uh, I, talk, I talk to the owner, it's like, like something from the 1960s. It's open. It's not like a building or something. It's like two, po two three posts with a shade from rotten woods. They just give a shade over them. I mean, if you push it, it's just going to fall. Mm -hmm. So if it's uh, going to be too close to the property line, to the, I don't think it's going to be even close to the, to the addition. But if it's required, we just take it out. Okay. Well, thank you. I mean, it seems like you are addressing the, you know, without even me having to ask. My questions that you are addressing. Uh, Both questions. The, the next issue. The items. <laughs> um, now, with regards to the drip line, based on the comments from the urban forester, they said that the proposed deck and stairs might actually be in the drip line. So, if that is the case, we might have to have you make modifications to the proposed deck and the proposed stairs, whether it be a slight relocation or whatnot. I'm just mentioning that to you because, again, an arborist report was not presented as part of the submittal package, and so this will be looked at if and when it comes to the next step, because it would have to go through the administrative design review, or at this point, 
No, well, for administrative exemption. Exemption. It would be an exemption. Okay, so. Um, yeah, we have the, another option if in case that, uh, in case that it's, uh, because I know it's supposed to be like 10% of the, of the drip line, of the total drip line, or five, minimum five foot from the drip line. So for my calculation, it's not going to be on the way. But if it's on the way, we can get a permit to trim, to trim the, uh, the tree for one foot or two foot. So it's, we have the option also to, trim, to get a permit and to trim the tree for this, in case that this is going to be the case. Okay, so be, because the tree hasn't been inspected with a, uh, an arborist of record, I will defer that to the urban forester to work with with staff in regards to any items or modifications that need to be made to the actual project, um, bearing in mind that we want to maintain the tree as much as possible in its existing condition. Absolutely. Okay. So uh, with the oak tree as issue aside, there was, as you mentioned, the issue with regards to an unpermitted patio structure that is extremely um, in disarray simply because of its age and, and location. And based on the lot coverage calculations for the project site, it appears that with this unpermitted structure, uh, you would not be able to legalize it simply because right now with the proposed addition at the rear, you are exactly at the maximum lot coverage right, right. calculation. So you would have to decide, would you like to have your addition or would you like to remove the unpermitted patio cover since it can't be legalized based on the lot coverage? No, we can remove maximum. it. Maximum. Okay, so with that said, that will be probably a condition of approval to address. Uh, the last issue is this basement area that is located below um, the existing house that wasn't identified in the plan or in the plans and elevations and cross sections. So um, that basement, if it is less than six feet in overall height, it is not counted towards floor area and it's considered storage. So if that basement can be modified or if it is less than six feet in overall height, um, we, we can just keep it as storage and it does not become an issue with regards to this application. If, however, the basement itself is greater than six feet in overall height, it becomes floor area, which in this case it wasn't noticed as part of this particular application. So if you intend to legalize the, the basement area as being habitable space, then this becomes an issue and it would require re-notification and the inclusion of it in the scope of this variance. So I believe that um, this matter was addressed to the owner and to you prior to the hearing. Yeah, it's going to be less than six foot. It's going to be less than six foot. Okay, so with that, good. I'm glad to hear it because... Yes, I know it was came to me today, yes. Exactly. Okay, so um, those are all the items that I had questions regarding this particular project. I'm not sure if there's anything else that you would like to add, simply because it seems like you came up to the dais to address any questions. I'm not sure that you were no, given the opportunity any... to actually uh, make your comments. Or, and if also, I believe I have a speaker card from the property owner, if, and so if you'd like to continue on. No, we, we're okay. We just address whatever we need to, uh, I mean, to answer whatever we need to answer, and I... Um, I believe from there it's uh, the city uh, approval I mean review mm -hmm. and let us know. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Okay. This is... Yes, thank you. Okay. So the last speaker card I have is for Mr. David Cooperson, yes. who's the property owner. Would you like to come up and... Make a few comments, or if you, I don't have any questions for you since it seems I, I, that all of them have I, been I guess, answered. I don't. I don't really need to speak unless there's something I need to address specifically. Um, just hoping to get it approved because we need more living space for our family of two school-age kids who, uh, uh, a boy and a girl who are in the same room for a long time, but are too old now to be in the same room. So we have them in a separate room. I I work from home though and had to give up my office. So they could have a bedroom. So this is this will give us an extra room, so I can uh, they can have their separate bedrooms. We can have our master bedroom, and I will be able to have an office for my work at home as well. So that's really the reason for it. 
Okay. And then you do have um, off-site parking, or not off-site parking, but you have a driveway. We have a driveway and the single-car garage, mm -hmm. uh, which we can park in, both of those. Um, and there's usually plenty of street parking as well. But okay. we can put both the cars in the garage and the driveway. Okay. All right. Well, thank you for coming okay. in. Okay. Thank you so much. Adding a few comments. And with that said, I will be taking the matter under submission and rendering a decision shortly. There are no other items on today's agenda. So this concludes the planning hearing officer hearing of August the 16th. Thank you for coming.